today's special guest is Lori Holt of BMI Bonnet, and she's here to show us how to create the first block in the Bloom Sew Along. So welcome, Lori. Hi, Cindy. Well, I'm so excited about this Bloom Sew Along, and I'm very excited about your latest collection, Calico Days. It's very you, right? It's yes. got all the scrappy looking pieces, but what else did you design? All my happy to go colors. Well, um, this is a fat quarter bundle, but I also designed uh, to go with the collection fat eighth panels. So there's three different ones. This is just one of them. So with one yard of fabric, you get eight fat eighths. And I did that so that there would be a lot of prints because I really like to sew scrappy. And you use a lot of color in your quilts, which I, I love. And so let's talk about the blue sew along. Okay, I designed these so simple shapes to go with my calico days because uh, a lot of people think the applique is hard, but I wanted to show everyone how easy applique can be. And so I designed this quilt called Bloom, which we will be doing in the sew along. It's a free downloadable pattern, and you can get it off of the Riley Blake website or off of my website, which is Be in My Bonnet. And it uses the Calico Days fabric, and you need to get the templates to create this. Right, those are your shapes. And what other supplies are needed? Um, we also use this Clover Bias Tape Maker, the quarter inch size, and we're going to be using that for all of the stems in each of the blocks. There are An 20 essential blocks. Essential tool. Yes. And then we need Pell On, and it needs to be sew in, not, not fusible, fusible, but the sew in, and it needs to be lightweight. You don't want it too thick. And that's what we use for the back to prepare each piece. And then uh, you need to get an eight and a half inch square ruler. It doesn't matter which brand, just as long as the eight and a half inch square so that we can square up the blocks when we're finished. And also to get your, right to now. get, yes, to get points and curves, this really helps to have a tool like this. And this is the clover. And I, I use that a lot for each piece, so I really recommend that. Okay, so those are the tools you'll need that really will make this so long much easier. That's right. Okay, let's get started. Okay, what first off, need? you need to cut your background squares nine inches. Then we're gonna trim them down to eight and a half. Whenever I do applique, I always cut my block a little bit bigger because during the applique process, it can kind of shrink up a little bit, checks. or some of the edges can fray and things like that. So that's where the eight and a half inch square up ruler comes in after we finish the applique. That you cut so it cut at it nine, nine inches square okay. at Good first. Tip. Okay. And then the next thing is we're going to cut the pieces for each shape. One from Pell On. Do you want to hold that, Cindy? Yeah. One from Pell On right there. and one from the fabric. So for the circle, you want to use a four inch square of the fabric and a four inch square of the Pell On. Okay. And just set that aside. We only need one circle, so you cut one of each. And then I have prepared one of the leaves, and one of the leaves I'm going to show you how to do, or you're going to do. And for that, you cut a two by two and a half inch piece of fabric and pell on as well. Just set that aside for tracing. And then for the A21 shape, which are the petals, we use five of those. I have four prepared. I'm going to show you how to do the fifth one, and that's a three inch square of pellon and fabric as well. Okay, and I love your design boards. You designed these. These make yes. quilting so They're an essential easy to tool your... for me and have been for yeah. a lot of years. Uh, like for the stem, thing. you're going to cut it five eighths of an inch wide. Remember, we're going to be using the quarter inch bias tape maker, and cut it about five inches long for the stem. Um, you don't have to cut this out on the bias because this is just a straight stem and we won't be needing it for curves. So I just cut it that long. That gives us a little bit extra. Okay. So we Great. can set those aside. And the first thing that you need to do is trace the shape, not onto the fabrics, but onto the pillon. So I like to use this Busy Fingers by Sue Daly. It's a nice surface to trace on so that it doesn't slip and you can always turn it when you need to. And it's pink, which is always nice. It's pink, yeah. And I just use a mechanical pencil. You can use whatever you want so that you can see the lines. What you're actually doing is marking your sewing lines. So it's not going to show. It's just going to be right in the seam. But I just like to trace a line just as close to the template as I can. And the reason I use a mechanical pencil 
is because I like a nice thin line. I don't want a pencil that will grow too thick grow when it gets dull, you know, how the lines go thicker. So let's just set that there for a minute. Better yet, let's put it right sides together, right on top of your square. And do you want to stick a pin in the center of that? Sure. So that one's traced. The and next one is you just center it. Yes. You just go through them all. Trace around each piece so that you can see it. Get this one ready for you. And then put it right sides on your fabric. And put a pin, put a pin in it. And we've got this one last A17. So this is how by tracing on the pillon and as close as you can around each shape, that's how you're going to end up with the exact same shape as you started out with is the template. You don't have to worry about tracing around seam allowances or anything like that. You need to just trace the exact shape. This pencil is. That's perfect. Going and a that's crazy. Why okay, there having we go. these templates, they're nice and firm. They're a nice plastic. Time. You can see through them. They've got center marks on all of them. So for any project you might be doing, that really comes in handy. Okay. So now we're ready to take them to the machine. That's right. And sew around them. And we're not leaving an opening because we're going to clip it right in the center, yeah, right? Yeah, we're just going to sew directly on the lines. Okay, let's go sew. Okay, so we finished the last one. Perfect. And I'll tell me why you had me use an open-toed foot. I always like to use an open-toed foot because I like to see exactly where my needle is going in on my line and not just put it under the foot and guess and hope it's getting there. So okay. I like to see exactly what I'm doing. And share your tip on stopping and starting. We used okay. uh, aqua thread so you could Yeah, see I normally it use this um, RFL 2024 to piece, but we used aqua so that you could see the lines. And what I like to do is I like to start on the side, never at a point, start on the side of a shape and I just start sewing and I sew all the way around just on a regular stitch. I don't tighten my stitch. You might gather it if you do. So I sew all the way around and then I sew past where I started sewing by about a half an inch just to secure the stitch so that it doesn't come undone when we turn it inside out. Okay. Well, tell me the next step. Okay. So what we're going to do is not press on the pill on side, but we're just going to come over here to the iron real quick. Get a nice And I iron. mean press, not iron. And it just makes it smooth a little bit before trimming. Then what we're going to do is just trim out a quarter inch seam allowance past the stitching line. I'll do it on this side so that you can see. It doesn't have to be an exact quarter inch. You're just going to trim around it. And there's no clipping on outside curves like this. In this um, block, there, we don't need to clip any of the seam allowances. There's only a few pieces that we need to clip before we turn inside out. And when we work on those blocks that week, I'll explain all of that. But for this, we just simply trim all the way around. OK. And I'll do, do you want to do the last one? one? And then you can talk on the next step. So now that we have our pieces trimmed, we're going to take and pinch our fabric away from our pillon and use some small, sharp embroidery scissors. I like little stork scissors for this. And I just do a little clip so that I can cut an X out of here. Just be careful to only cut through the pillon. Not grab your bottom. And not grab layer. your bottom piece. That's why it's nice to have these little scissors that you can control. If you use longer ones, it's easier to clip something that you don't want to. But you can see it's just an X and you right just there. do it enough to turn it inside out. Not yeah, I just do. And see, I just turn it inside out, right side out. And see how kind of on a circle, I'll just kind of take my fingers like this, kind of like I'm, like I'm making a pizza. And then I take this curve right here. And notice when I put this in here, I'm going under the seam allowance so that I'm just on the fabric side because you don't want to poke through your pillon. We want the pillon lightweight yeah. so that it's not so thick, but 
that means it's a little bit delicate. So you just need to kind of be gentle around your curves. And then with circles, it also helps too. See how I can kind of roll that yeah. seam? And because it's cotton fabric, it really kind of likes to finger press and keep that, you know, keep that creased a little bit as you go around. You can also use this for your corners. So when you get that shape, like the circle, nice. this is important again, don't iron back and forth, just press so that you just get a nice flat piece and always do it from the fabric side. Don't press on the pillow. So there's that circle, center circle. Okay, any tips this is where it's really important there. to go into the fabric under the seam allowance. Like right like that, right? Yeah, I can't see what you're... Yeah, so I'm you're just under there. the seam. Mm -hmm. Then you can push a little bit out on the fabric part. But if you were up here and pushed into the pillow, right you would poke a hole right through. So you just really poke that out. And then in these... Get nice, sharp You can corners. even turn the tool a little bit you know, to kind of get what you want. Just be careful on the corners. You want to poke them out, but you want to do it gently. And then after you do that, sometimes there can be a curve here a little bit, so you just kind of roll that out and crease it. Roll that out, crease it. See how that one really needed to be rolled out so that That's you can't see the pill on. And then I just bring it over here again and put it with these other little happy pieces that are already prepared. And yeah, you want to cut your, yeah, you want to pull that apart and pinch it to make your first cut just to make sure that you don't cut into that fabric. This clip, this one's a little fiddly, isn't it? Yeah, it's do, you so want, small. do you want me to show you how I do the little ones? I yeah, kind of have to do me. them half at a time because it's so tiny. It is small. Does it help to have I just do, mills? instead of worry, not really, <laughs> not instead really. of worrying about the corners, I just worry about one half. And then you can take the tool and do those yeah, very slick. points right there. So you kind of get that out of the way, you know. And then you just turn it the rest of the way. And you can always use the tool to help you, you know, if your fingers can't get in there. And then this is a curve, but this curve is too big to get in there. So... Yeah. I just go like that and kind of run it along, Ease right along the seam, there. look at it, you know, see if it needs a little bit more help. And then again, I just roll it. And I like to use my tool to pull these X's back out if they fold it under, mm -hmm. just to reduce, reduce um, the bulk a little bit. I can tell you've done this one or I, two times. I've done this for years, so I'm excited to finally have these templates out to show everybody how simple it is. And then I just go over here, press it. So now we have the pieces prepared except for the stem. The stem, okay, show us how to use so the So this is how maker. I do it. First, I like to take, and I like to cut a little point at the end to push through this, okay? Makes so you can see in, this at the top. You can see how that comes out. You want, you want the point the right side up and the point to go in like this. Scissors that are closed and just pull it through till that tip is starting. In a second, once you get the tip out, you can see that that's centered. And then I kind of just turn it. Just adjust. It's almost as it just starts to curve a little bit on the width of this. I actually cut mine a little bit smaller than a lot of people do, but I think it helps so that it doesn't stay so wrinkled. This is kind of a short strip we're working with. I like to thread it through there because I find that it keeps it straight a little bit. Mm -hmm. So um, I like to, instead of using my iron and pressing it coming out this way where the folds are, I like to press it coming on this top. way. Okay. Then you don't get that center crease on... Uh, your stems. See on my block, do you want to grab that block and show this stem how there's no crease down the middle of it? It's smooth. Yep. And that's because you press on that side. That's because I press on this side and I start pulling it out a little bit. And I just use this to pull on. And I can press this probably about a half inch away after I pull it out. And that helps 
with the crease, pressing the crease as you come out. So if you put your iron all the way up here, you might have a crease. If you wait just a little bit, like a half inch out, then you'll have this little piece right here. Perfect. It's already turned. And that, would and be that should so be plenty tiny. long. Like I said, I cut it five inches long, but you can see as compared to here, we have a little bit of leeway. Sometimes the ends are a little bit crooked and stuff like that. So, okay, so now we have all of our pieces prepared. And now let's talk about laying it out on the block. So here's our background square. Show us the next step. Okay, well, first of all, with the background square, you want to find the center on this block. Some of the blocks, we need it the center to find the center both ways, but on this one we just need the center this way, so we just fold it in half and put a little pressing line. So now you've got your crease so you know where your center is. And then we're going to place our stem here. And on our stem, this one's kind of thin, so that's just going to go under the flower. It'll never show. But you want to just lay this out right on that center line. And then then you're going to take the first petal and center it. And you can just tell the center from that. I like to bring it down if you want to measure. On this block, I'll, show you, I'll tell you each block we need to bring it down, but I like to bring it down by 3 quarters of an inch. Because remember that this is going to be your finished size. And you, you can ignore this. Out. and you just yes. We're going to be trimming some off, and I don't want to be you know, trimming into my petals, so I want it far enough down. So on each block, I'll tell you how far down to come up, but our, our stem will and always be at the bottom. each week, you'll have a tip of yes. how to put the block Every together. week on my blog, I'll show that block for step by step. Okay? So then there's my first petal, and then the next ones, I want to just bring down a little bit. We can fuss with them in a minute, but for these center petals, see this line right here? And any of, your, if any of this background fabric has some straight lines, so you could kind of use that to help. You must have designed it that way. Yeah, right? I did. <laughs> um, I like to use straight lines wherever I can find them. So I just kind of laid that there. And then these can overlap a little bit if you want them to. But the main thing is you want to just kind of have them All even. separated. You know, you don't per se have to measure every little thing that way, but... And then at this point, you want to decide before you put the circle on. You can add your leaves, too. The leaves come down about a quarter of an inch past the petals, and they just touch that stem. But again, you want to use that background fabric to make sure that they're straight. And you want to make sure that you cut the background fabric straight when you're cutting your 9-inch square so that you can use those for straight lines. Yes. Okay. So this is where you want to decide how you're going to baste. Um, you can glue baste by just taking a few daubs of glue and putting them on the back and letting that dry. Or you can pin baste, or you can um, use big basting stitches with a needle and thread, however you want to do it. Um, I hand applique mine, and <clears throat> so you still want to baste even if you're machine appliqueing. But for hand applique, I find it easier to use the glue so that I'm not stabbing my palms with pins and things like that. Yeah, because you kind of, you know, fold it up a little bit sure. when you're hand appliqueing. So this is what you want to do at this point. I'm just showing you how to lay out the block and you can decide on how you're going to do it. On my blog, I do show how to do the hand applique and the machine applique, but again, you prepare these pieces the exact same way, either way you're doing it. Then you put your Once you've circle on there and this one you might want to grab a ruler you know what I mean? And just go around and measure to make sure that that is centered. And then you'll go ahead and base that. And then you're all ready to go. Whether you machine applique or hand applique, this is what you end up with. And doesn't that look fantastic? I That's love it. That's block number one. Block number one. So let's talk about thread choice. I assume you use your Arfil Happy Color Thread. Yes. And that's 50 weight, 100% cotton. And I, it matches all of my pieces. And I like to use matching thread, whether I'm machine appliqueing or hand appliqueing. So for this, I just switched out the colors for each thing. 
And if, I, if you want to machine applique, you would just have to switch out the top thread and not your bobbin, just so that it matches. And it looks fantastic. It blends right in. You can't even see your stitches. So that's a great tip. Yes, and all of my RFL thread sets match my fabrics. And then one more thing I wanted to tell you what I do after my piece is appliqued. Mm -hmm. I don't want to press from the front because then you'll just show all the creases underneath here. So I always, always press my applique blocks from the back and just gives them a nice flat look without losing the integrity of the block that you might do that if you press from the front. And it looks fantastic. Thanks. So we're excited for our sew along to begin and Lori's gonna have a lot of fun things on her blog for Every a little Monday. over 22 weeks. About. Yeah, I wanna show a few different things that we can do with the Sew Simple Shapes besides this because there is a lot we can do. So join us every Monday on Lori's blog and Riley Blake Designs blog, and we're going to have a lot of fun. You're going to have a lot of giveaways on your blog. And a lot of giveaways, too. So join us.